first example of a scenario where we can be an example of making care contagious. Classroom setting. And the teacher says, all right, listen up, let's start the lesson. Classroom setting. Classmate gets up to do a presentation. Circle of friends sharing what happened on the weekend. It's somebody else's turn to talk. Who has to go quiet and listen first? Everybody? Now I know, you've heard listen up ad nauseum many, many times a day, every day since kindergarten. And when I open with the power of listening, what's powerful about that is that so often when we create good leadership, we create good leadership with great speaking skills. That when you imagine great leaders, you picture them talking, presenting, moving people with their words. And don't get me wrong, that is very powerful. But what's great about this opening point is it points out to all of you that in fact your greatest gift as a leader is your ability to listen. And that means that all of you, no matter what your comfort level is in speaking to others and or presenting from in front of a class to a stage, all of you have tremendous ability to make a difference through the power of listening. So when I do this as an interactive workshop, I chat with the leaders in my room and I say, what do good listeners do? And here's some of the top answers we all agree on. Eye contact. And we all know that the number one distractor right now for eye contact is of course, wait, what? It's the phone. So when somebody is speaking, whether in a more formal setting like the classroom or more informal with friends or family, Eyes up, eyes up. I sometimes have to say that my, to my daughter, Tori, or even remind myself, chin up, eyes up, look at the person. You've all been there where you've missed something because you were, wait, what? Eye contact. The head nod. Oh, I loved it. Whereas when I'm doing a classroom presentation, where not only the teacher is giving me a, but classmates, right? The power of the head nod. The head nod says, I'm with you. I'm listening. You're doing great. Try it in a circle of friends. Try having great eye contact and a head nod when a buddy is telling a story and you'll discover something. Their eyes will go to you more often because they'll notice you're with them. You're into it. It is such a compliment. And you don't have to say anything. Couple that with that with us a smile. But I truly think that one of the best ways we can show that we're listening is ask follow-up questions to show that you're following along with the story. Classics being, so why is that? What happened, what happened next? What are you gonna do about that? How do you feel? The question why is so powerful. It shows that you truly want to know. Think of this example. I'm at a conference and I'm lining up to get food with student leaders from both the high school, college, university age. And we're putting food on our plate and I look over and I see a name tag and it's Keith. I said, hey Keith, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Back and forth, that small talk. Well, when I do my student leadership programs and I talk about making the move from small talk to smart talk by going beyond the, hi, how are you, nice weather, what you up to, to smart talk conversation is ask those additional questions like why, why is that, get to know people. So one of my favorite questions when I meet student leaders is I say, so Keith, what do you do extra in high school? And that's a great way to find out what they're into, right? Is it music? Is it sports? Is it drama? Gaming? Whatever the scenario. And he said, ah, I'm too busy to do anything in school. That's what I call a lob in the conversation world. A lob. 
This person has sent up an idea and says that you take it. Ask, see if you're interested enough to ask why he's even saying that. So I took the bait. Oh, why are you so busy? Oh, he said, I'm on Canada's national water polo team and between practices and travel, it just gets too busy. He's on our national water polo team? You know water polo, you play it in a pool? Now, I, I, mean, I had a pretty funny joke right back at him. I said, water polo? I always wondered, how do you get the horses in the pool? He had a bit of a laugh. But then I followed up with even more. You know what, I've actually never really watched water polo. Like, how does it work? Like, uh, how long are the games? And um, uh, what's like the average score? So next you know, now we each have a plate of food. And I end up sitting with him and a buddy or two. Because at a conference, I make the effort to sit with new people. Now we're having a conversation. And he's thoroughly enjoying the conversation. Why? He's talking about what he loves. And it's actually less pressure on me. I just feed that person questions, they do the talking, right? As a speaker, I walk into so many new buildings, and one way I take pressure off myself is I walk in and I ask the principal, I ask student leaders, I ask the student council advisor, I, I run into the custodian, and I ask those little questions. Oh, were you raised here? Uh, how long you worked here? Uh, besides student leadership, what else are you into? And I let them do the talking. I end up dropping that material into my speech, but at the same time, it gets me in the zone. I'm about to do an hour, three hours of speaking. I do less speaking, they do more talking. What a gift you can share when you're an example of listening for other people to follow. The head nod, great eye contact, smiling and showing interest when appropriate, and the powerful follow-up questions. Why is that? 